Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted and privileged to welcome a very, very senior professional from Toronto, Canada, Mr. Danny Asaf. Danny, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ash. A real pleasure to join you and to be able to share this conversation with your audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Danny is an author and a lawyer. Uh, he is an author of a book titled Say Please and Thank You and Stand in Line. One man's story of what makes Canada special and how to keep it that way. So Danny, uh, let's start by asking you a question on what is your life journey and what brought you to Canada? Ash, thank you for that question. And my life journey, my family story, I think is typical of many in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a story of travel and of new adventure and new opportunity. Mm -hmm. So what brought my family to Canada was about 100 years ago, my great grandfather left Lebanon okay. in the 20s mm -hmm. and came to Canada. They say he arrived in Edmonton in 1927, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, mm -hmm. which he came from the Bekaa Valley, which is a big change in life and culture and uh, definitely opportunity to come mm. to northern Alberta. Correct. Cold winters, yeah. there is almost nothing familiar to them. Mm. But what was, it was cold weather, but the embrace they got was warm mm. because it was a land of opportunity and a place where they could start over. Mm. And he came to Canada and started a completely new life. And he became a merchant and opened a general store in downtown Edmonton. Mm. And then from there, the story continues again, like many families whose, whose uh, great grandfathers or great grandmothers came to different lands. Mm. He brought my great uncle. Mm -hmm. He brought his son many years later. Mm -hmm. And his son came to Northern Alberta and similarly started to find opportunity. Where did he find opportunity? In the fur business. Mm -hmm. So in the 1950s and the 1940s and 1960s, fur, mink, Yep. It was big, mm -hmm. a big industry. Correct. And he became an award-winning mink rancher. So you can imagine this family coming from the Bekaa Valley of Lebanon, where mm -hmm. it's, you know, this typical Mediterranean countryside, mm -hmm. olives and grapes and mm -hmm. fruits and farming, <laughs> all the way to Northern Alberta. He becomes an award-winning mink rancher. Mm -hmm. He's not the only one mm -hmm. because there were Lebanese immigrants before him mm -hmm. who had come to Canada and got into the fur trade and learned even to speak the indigenous languages to wow. trade mm -hmm. with the native people of Canada and be able to grow their business. Amazing. And then my father came from Beirut in 1965. Mm -hmm. And similarly, he came again to enjoy the openness and the opportunity of Canada. Mm -hmm. Beirut was a thriving, it was the Paris of the Middle East. Right. In the but the one thing that he saw when he came here was unbounded opportunity. Mm. And then I was born in 1969 in Edmonton. And like many young Canadian boys, I wanted to play professional ice hockey. Okay. So my focus of my young life was to be in the National Hockey League and to play, play professional ice hockey because uh -huh. it is cold in northern Alberta and you make peace with the winter ash. So right. we ski and we play ice hockey and we enjoy the beauty of Incredible. winter and the cold and make the most Incredible. of it. Incredible. So that is the actual physical journey, but it's a story that's familiar to many. Mm. It's a story that's familiar to many mm. whose families have emigrated and come to different places to find mm. opportunity. Amazing. And we were blessed. And it started this new chapter of our family in Canada. Wow. Wow. What a fascinating story. <laughs> and uh, then you decided to become a lawyer when uh, hockey, obviously you didn't go in for professional <laughs> hockey. Yeah. Well, I, people say, what do you do? Mm. And I often describe myself as a failed hockey player mm. who then became a lawyer. <laughs> okay. It was that dream that ended that pushed me to become a lawyer. And of course, life and fate plays its hand in the best way. Mm. And of course, for me, it was better for me. I'm, much, much more successful as a lawyer than I probably ever would have been at a hockey as a hockey player. But like all people, I still dream to play in the professional. Mm. Well, but that's how I became, uh, that's how I came to, that's how I came to law. I went to mm -hmm. law school uh, here in Toronto, where I moved from Edmonton, my family home and my family history in Canada mm -hmm. and came to the University of Toronto, mm -hmm. where I had a fantastic opportunity to learn 
mm -hmm. uh, the subject of law at the University of Toronto. And then even the greatest gift that I got being at the law school was I met my wife. Okay. And we've been married. We had our 25th anniversary this year. We met at the University of Toronto Law School, not far from my home today. And we have four children. Wonderful. So law school was a, a, a big success for me in many ways, Ash. Fantastic. So now before asking you any more questions about your legal profession, let's come to your book. Uh, say please and thank you. And I've experienced this many times. Yes. I think Canadians are the kindest and the most polite people I have met in, in the developed world, if I can use that term. <laughs> tell me about uh, your book. But before that, tell me, is the book available on Amazon? Yes, the book is available on Amazon. Okay, so I will go and check it out. And I'm asking all our viewers and listeners to check out Danny Asaf's book as well. So tell me about your book. Thank you. Well, I wrote this book. I'll tell you a little bit about the title. This book is, I think, uh, for me, it was an opportunity to tell a story about us as humanity. Mm -hmm. It's one story about one family in Canada, mm -hmm. but it really is a story about all of us and about humanity and how opportunity is available to us everywhere in the world and how we look to ourselves today, especially the 21st century, we need to see one another as the, as the potential allies we are mm -hmm. rather than the certain enemies people want us to see. Mm -hmm. Because the world has never been more connected. As an objective fact, people say the world is connected, but it is true. We've never had technology ever. Human, no humans have had the technology you and I have today. They've never had this to Absolutely. connect like we have. The travel is more intense than ever. In the again, in the history of humanity, we don't have to read the story of Marco Polo or in the Arab world, Ibn Battuta. You know the famous travelers mm -hmm. and explorers. Exceptional yeah. stories. They went so far today. In two seconds, you can go. Mm -hmm. to the east, to the west, wherever. And our fates have never been more intertwined Correct. economically. We don't know where our future will lie, especially if, for, not for us, for our kids. Do we mm -hmm. know where our kids are going to work? Yeah. Who is going to be their boss? Who is going to be their team member? It's, we do not know. So we need to make a friend. Make a friend <laughs> and hope that those doors of opportunity continue to open for all of us like they did in the past with mm -hmm. my family in that old way. Mm -hmm. Now, my book, and I say in the book, you know, we talk about the idea of tribes. We'll talk a little bit about this. And I have this, this concept. Human today in the 21st century, yes, humans are tribal. But mm. today, humanity is our tribe. Mm. Because tribalism was based on self-interest and self-preservation. Right. To work with a group of people to thrive in your time. Well, mm. today, who is the tribe that will help you thrive and survive in your time? It's broader. Yes, mm -hmm. humanity is our tribe because the challenges and the opportunities we face are global in nature, mm -hmm. like never in history. Mm -hmm. So when we come back to why I wanted to write the book, it was really a story to tap into that because mm -hmm. what makes Canada special, I think, can make the future special for all of us. Mm -hmm. So I start with this title, say please and thank you and stand in line. Mm -hmm. And you said Canadians are the most polite. And that's very kind of you to say. Mm. Uh, but I have been around the world, mm. all kinds of places, you know, east, west, uh, more economically developed, less effort. I can tell you my own personal life, there is kindness everywhere. I agree. And there is beauty everywhere. Absolutely. It's expressed differently. But saying please and thank you and stand in line is a universal thing. You can do it in any language. Mm. And in Canada, it's part of the culture. Mm -hmm. So there is kindness and there's beauty in every culture, but it's expressed differently. But Where's there are that? ways that are universal. That's yeah. universal. So mm -hmm. why did I have that as my title? When my father came to Canada, mm -hmm. he was greeted by other Lebanese families and, uh, and sons of Lebanese and daughters of Lebanese immigrants who had been here from the time of my great grandfather and before. Mm -hmm. So my father got here. And of course, like many people, very proud of his heritage, very proud of his heritage, of his mm -hmm. Lebanese heritage, of course. But the son of the son of Lebanese immigrants, this man named Munir Hamdan and mm -hmm. his uh, he lives today in Edmonton. He's 95 years old. Okay. And I spoke to him in writing this book and my father I spoke to. And my father says, this man said to me, mm -hmm. yes, remain proud of your heritage, but never forget when you come to, to Canada and you're here and you want to succeed. All the people here always say, please and mm -hmm. thank you and stand in line. Wow. 
-hmm. He never forgot those words. And those words were, for me, they are poetic and they're profound mm -hmm. because what they say about a society. Mm -hmm. Those who say that and do that for one another, firstly, it's very polite and it's very mm -hmm. nice. It makes life easier. But also it shows that people who do that for one another, they respect and they equally expect to be respected. Mm -hmm. It is the foundation of equality that any person you see, you will do that. You will say please and thank okay. you and stand by. So in that way, it is also a universal membership criteria. So anybody can come and be Canadian. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, it doesn't compromise your religion. It doesn't compromise your culture. It doesn't compromise the things you like, the food you like. Mm -hmm. You don't have to compromise anything. Correct. You do that and then you become Canadian. So it's the most beautiful membership criteria because it's meaningful yet simple. Mm. And it creates cohesion because it creates this code where each respects and expects to be respected. Mm. How wonderful. So this is, this is the, the title of the book and what mm. I was trying to articulate in the book. Mm. And then through that, talk about the things that we see in our life today that are challenging mm. us and the mm. opportunities, whether they're in politics, whether in the economy, whether they are environmentally, whether they are security wise, mm. and how we look at this model of Canada as it's not perfect. It's mm -hmm. absolutely, of course not, it's human life on earth. Mm. There mm. is no such thing as perfection mm. and we will not get it, but we can always strive to touch anything mm. that comes into our way to make it better as best as we can and then God forgive us when we make a mistake. Mm. God forgive us when we make a Very mistake, which we all do. And I'm sure I've made many already this morning, Ash. Very interesting. <laughs> very, very interesting. Thank you for sharing so much about your book. Now let's move to uh, your uh, professional avatar as a lawyer. Yes. Uh, you have specialized in the area of competition and yes. uh, foreign investment. Yes. What made you choose these two specializations? Yes, it's a great question. When I started in law, you know, you have your ideas, like anyone starting in any right. profession. You mm -hmm. see something maybe in, on television, maybe in a movie, maybe through a family member, and you see that as the model of what you would like to do. Correct. But then, of course, you get to sit in the chair of a lawyer or a doctor or engineer, and it's a different experience mm -hmm. when you're in the driver's seat, so to speak. Yeah. So for me, I had studied, uh, gone to business school first, and I went mm -hmm. to law school. I did not know what competition law was, mm -hmm. but my family had businesses. We were in retail. So I always loved watching the marketplace and why mm -hmm. people buy, why they sell, mm -hmm. because it's, it's not about need. Often it is about need, but many things in the economy are about things people like or mm -hmm. What, draw, what draws them? What repels them? Mm -hmm. And how do things work? How do you tap into that? It's, it's about humanity in many Correct. ways. Correct. So I came and I saw this area. I got to practice in competition law. Mm -hmm. And I saw it's an area that really looks at why markets work that way, mm -hmm. how companies participate in the market. And my practice is advising companies when there's a merger, they're either for a merger, against mm -hmm. a merger, when there is issues in the marketplace of dominance, like we see in big tech, are they too big? Are they the right size? Do we have enough innovation? How do we want to address these issues in these modern times in markets we didn't even imagine existed? Not only are these issues uh, uh, important, mm -hmm. but they're in new markets that no one ever dreamed of. It's like the space of marketplaces. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's spaces no one ever imagined would exist. Right that we'd be able to do the things that we do and communicate the way we do. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was always fascinating to find an area of law that brought all of these pieces together. Mm -hmm. And that's what competition law is about. And today, as we see the issues, again, they're most notorious in big tech, mm -hmm. but in other areas of essentially, how do we create economic wealth and maintain economic opportunity mm -hmm. for all? Mm -hmm. Because we know the foundation of an economy is the power of the people at the end of the day. Correct. And it's the power of ideas. We do mm. not know. No one can sit in a meeting room somewhere and think I am going to create a Facebook as a matter of a committee mm. or a matter of government or a matter of a working group. It doesn't work that way. Mm. We all know that. It's like each one of us is a seed in a garden. Mm. Each one of us is a seed in a garden. Mm. Life plants us mm. in the earth and then we do not know what will sprout. We have no idea. One is a rose. One is a tulip. One is a tree. 
but they all have the potential for great beauty. They all, each and every one of us, each and every child that's who's born, we do not know what they can flower into. We do not know. And the beauty comes from places that are unanticipated. Correct. This is what fundamentally it's about. It's how do we enjoy that beauty when it grows and watch mm -hmm. it grow. Sometimes maybe it can grow too big or its vines can stop the growth of other things. Mm -hmm. But fundamentally, we don't want to stop people from allowing them to right. make the most of their ideas and their mm -hmm. potential. So we want to keep that ground fertile and always available to people. Fascinating. So it's a way of, of really tapping into that and always seeing how mm -hmm. that dynamic plays mm -hmm. out. So it's mm -hmm. fascinating. And then we could talk a little about foreign investment. As well. So I'm coming to that. So, you know, just before we started recording, yes. we were talking about your uh, focus on foreign investment. And we were saying foreign investment is no longer black and white. There's a lot of gray. There is. I'd love to get your perspective on what is driving foreign investment into Canada? So you have this uh, unique age today mm -hmm. where it's very hard to draw a very strict black and white line between who's our enemy and who's our ally, as I was talking about yeah. before. So when we look back in history, again, we're being more general, not, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's general trends. Absolutely. We, see, we see that it was, it was more binary. Hmm. The, uh, someone would say, this is our enemy, you have a war, and it's pretty black and white. There's nothing going on in the middle of that. Hmm. Today, the way the world is interconnected, and the way we are, if we don't have to, even if we don't admit it, even if hmm. we don't want to say, it doesn't matter. It's like gravity. It exists. We are interconnected. In no matter what a headline tells you, we know. Hmm. We, are in connect we are interconnected in different ways. Hmm. So it's very hard to say, you are my enemy in every sphere. You mm -hmm. are my ally in every sphere. Correct. It's hard to say that today. Mm -hmm. So today, even if we have a conflict with somebody, mm -hmm. then after the conflict starts, we realize we're connected in some way. Absolutely. So we, we have to create a path to make sure that, again, mutual survival can continue. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's interesting today when we see what's driving investment into Canada. We see, for example, resources, mm -hmm. natural resources, oil, gas, and you have these tensions between nations. You have tensions between policymakers, mm -hmm. climate change versus make sure that people don't freeze in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that? Yes, we could say no one wants fossil fuel. Okay. But winter is coming, whether we like it, we don't like it, we enjoy it, we don't enjoy it and you don't want to freeze. Correct. Okay, so how do we balance these things? So again, we look at, there needs to be, again, like life teaches, we can be as strident as we want. Mm -hmm. We can be as ideological as we want, but life will discipline us mm -hmm. in saying to one another, compromise, mm -hmm. consensus, mm -hmm. find a way practically through these situations mm -hmm. to allow you and your family, your loved ones to thrive and strive. Mm. in this time because one thing none of us want to see nothing is worth this mm. is destroying the future of our kids today mm. so you have to think of ways yep. to find new consensus and that's a bit about my book is about as well it's even the darkest most divided times no one is going anywhere there's no mm. one disappearing and things need to be done Correct. and Great big things can only be done mm -hmm. with some kind of consensus. Why? I don't know. Mm -hmm. As bigger powers, it is true. Mm -hmm. Great things can only be done with consensus at the end mm -hmm. of the day. So we are forced and disciplined back into thinking creative ways to find consensus where we can, again, to make the most of opportunity and the potential of our time for mm -hmm. us and our kids. So foreign investment is also an assessment of that. Hmm. Who will you let invest in your country? Who are you going to trust as a partner? And of course, it's normal that over a short or medium period of time, it will up and down and so on. But hmm. the overall philosophy needs to be, we need to have our economies open. Hmm. We need to have access to capital. We need to have access to ideas. Again, I'm no student of history. You know, you read, they teach you, they give you a book in school, hmm. you read it, you enjoy it. And I, my recollection of the greatest cities and the greatest places in the world in history was something like this. And forgive me for mm -hmm. the mistakes that I make in this description is uh -huh. the greatest cities in history were always described as following. They were open to people. Mm -hmm. They pursued beauty. Mm -hmm. They had, a, they had a, a, a priority on the greatest and the best ideas. Mm -hmm. And they, people flocked there 
to create great societies and civilizations. Mm. And then when they tell you, oh, this declined this city, mm. always some version of Absolutely. the city became closed. Mm. The city was not welcoming. Mm. The city divided against itself and the people left. And it was its, its height. Uh, it fell from its heights. Mm. Just general trend mm. uh, in, in the history of humanity. That's how great wealth is created. That's how great society is created. And that's how beauty is created for mm. us to enjoy this very short time we have on this planet. Fascinating, fascinating. <laughs> so Danny, I have time for one more question. And this next mm -hmm. question is for the many, many people who will listen to our conversation. Yes. Based on your amazing journey, uh, mm. your incredible experience, the, the journey of your family from Lebanon to Canada, your book, what would you say are three lessons you would want our viewers and listeners to take away from your journey and our conversation? Always to respect and to, be, and to expect to be respected. Mm -hmm. That's the foundation of all human relations. Yeah. That quality of worth and the equality of our potential. Mm -hmm. Number two, for all of us mm -hmm. to look across the world, across our communities, mm -hmm. and see where we can play to our strengths. Mm -hmm. Think of what you love, think of what you like, and think of your potential. Where is it most valuable? Mm -hmm. And seek that place out. Mm -hmm. number, number two. And number three, to always pursue the beautiful things. Mm -hmm. Always pursue the beautiful things. Mm. Whether they are in nature, whether they are in business, whether they are in relationships, mm. whether they are in a, a meal, whether they are in, in any sphere of our lives, there mm. is beauty everywhere. Mm. Seek it, promote it, produce it, and bring more beauty to yourself and everything around you. Again, just to enjoy this very short time we have together on this planet. Mm. Those are the three lessons that... I try to keep in mind what I can. And mm -hmm. like I say, God forgive me when I fail at that, but I try every day. I try Absolutely. to pursue those things. <laughs> well said, well said. Danny, on that note, uh, thank you so much for speaking to me. Um, your last three lessons of respect, play to your strengths and pursue beautiful things are, are really, really such powerful messages you're giving. Thank you for your talking to me about your book, say please and thank you and stand in line. Thank you also for talking to me about your thoughts on competition law and foreign investment. Thank you for speaking to me and good luck. It's my pleasure, Ash. All the best and God bless to you and all of your listeners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Brand Called You videocast and podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.